turn with us to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 22. Numbers chapter 22. I was talking with Joe this morning after the service, and I had announced this morning I was going to preach on Balaam and the donkey. And I told Joe, as I was preparing this, it dawned on me that in all these many years, I've never preached on this scripture. I've mentioned it, of course, but I've never preached from this scripture. And I've been preaching a long, long, long time. So I think it's about time for me to preach on Balaam and the donkey. Look with me, Numbers chapter 22, and we're going to begin with verse 21. And the Bible says, And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass with his two servants, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on one side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. When he asked Saul, the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. And she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would, there, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass upon whom thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. And then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we never fail to be amazed at God, all you teach us, all the wisdom of God is in this book. How we thank you for that. God, that you've given it to us by thy Holy Spirit. Father, what a blessing, what a blessing it is. I ask you, Father, to take control tonight. I ask you, Father, to open our eyes that we might see, even as God, you opened Balaam's eyes. I pray, Father, that this will be a time and Lord, we grow. We grow in faith and knowledge. And God, we, we draw closer, ever closer to you. Father, have your way. God, glorify thy son. In Jesus Christ's name, I do pray. Amen. Tonight, I want us to look at one of the most unusual accounts in, in the word of God. So unusual that I want to remind you, beloved, this is absolutely true. If it wasn't true, God would not have put it in his word. Amen? It is true. I want us to look at the account of Balaam 
and the donkey. And before we get into this, beloved, I, I need to give you some background about what's going on. So bear with me. Folks, the children of Israel were on their way to the promised land. So they pitched their tents in the plain of Moab. In other words, they made camp in the land of Moab. Now, beloved, the king of Moab was a man named uh, Balak. Uh, and Balak, listen, he did not like that one bit. I mean, he was upset. In fact, he was terrified. And, and, and so was the entire country, the Bible tells us. You see, they had heard, beloved, of what had happened to the Amorites, what Israel had done to them. So, beloved, they wanted nothing to do with these Hebrews. They wanted them destroyed. They wanted them driven out of their land. So, beloved, there was a man named Balaam. Now, Balaam was a prophet of God. And Balaam had the reputation, beloved, of being a man that if he cursed you, you were cursed. Or if he blessed you, you were blessed. Well, Balak knew about this man. He decided, beloved, to hire Balaam to come and curse Israel. So he sent the elders, the nobles of, of Moab and Midian, beloved, to talk with, with uh, uh, Balaam and to ask Balaam to come. And they brought treasures with them. They brought money with them to pay him to curse Israel. Now, when they got there, they told Balaam, they said, there's a people come out of Egypt. Balak, king of Moab, he wants you to come and curse them so he can smite them and drive them out of the land. So Balaam, beloved, told the, 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 these men, he said, you stay here tonight, and I'm going to go talk to God. So Balaam, beloved, spent the night asking God's permission to curse Israel. Can you imagine the irony of that? I mean, the Israel was God's people, and he was asking God for permission to curse Israel. Folks, God, God, God's answer is in verse 12 of this chapter. Read it with me if you would. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Folks, you can't get any clearer than that. I mean, God laid it on the line. Beloved, God said, no, no, you can't go with them. No, you can't curse these people. Well, the next morning, Balaam told those men, no, I can't go with you. God won't let me go with you. So they go back and they tell King Balak, Balaam won't come. He, he won't do this thing. But Balak, beloved, wouldn't take no for an answer. You ever seen anybody like that? Would not take no for an answer. So he sends another party of men more honorable, more noble than the first party, and more riches, beloved. And he, they go again, beloved, to Balaam with the same request. Now, folks, they laid this at Balaam, uh, uh, before Balaam. They said, listen, they said if you'll come and, and curse these people, that they, they will give you anything you want. We'll give you anything you want, and we'll give you great honor if you do this thing. If you'll only come and curse Israel. Now, folks, what should Balaam have done? I mean, God had already said, no, 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 you can't do that. What should Balaam have done? He should have told God, told those men, hey, no way, no way. God said, no, that's it. You can go back, you can offer me the world. I'm not going to do it. God said, no. But that's not what Balaam did. Beloved, he heard that offer. 
And I believe greed got a hold of his heart. That's what I believe. And here's what he said. He said, I'll go ask God again. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll go ask God again. So he goes, beloved, to God again. And God, beloved, gives him this answer in verse 20. Look at this in verse 20. And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that, that shalt thou do. Whoa, what's God saying? Folks, God here is being, I believe, sarcastic to Balaam. He'd already told him no. He'd already told him. Folks, it was like God was, was being sarcastic to him because he, he knew, he knew, beloved, that Balaam wanted to go, wanted to go. It, it was like God was saying, I told you no, but, but I'll permit you to do what you want. Go with them if you want to, but you will say only the things I tell you, only the things. I want you to listen very carefully to me. Beloved, this is what theologians call God's permissive will. See, God, beloved, has a perfect will. And his perfect will, beloved, is what we should strive for. Amen? But God also, beloved, has a permissive will. Beloved, listen. This was God's permissive will. This was what was going on. Beloved, God has a will, and he makes his will known. But if a Christian, listen to me, if they persist, if they persist, if they persist, God will allow them to go, beloved, the way they want. He'll allow them to go. But be sure, beloved, when you do that, you are headed for trouble. You are he When you're out of God's will, you are headed for trouble. And so it was with Balaam. Folks, God's will is good, amen? God's will is right, amen? God's will is blessing. I mean blessing upon blessing. Folks, but when a person goes against God's will and gets into God's permissive will, he or she can expect a hard, hard, hard time as we're going to see with Balaam, as we're going to see. That Christian, listen to me, and this is what I meant, this is what I was saying. I wish we had our, all of our people here. That p Christian who isn't faithful is in God's permissive will. That's not God's will. God's will is for them to be faithful, amen? Amen. He tells us that over and over and over in the world. But if they insist, if that's really what they want, God will let them be unfaithful. He'll let them be unfaithful. Listen to what I'm telling you. Beloved, God's will, listen, that, that Christian that doesn't love God and that doesn't love his brothers and sisters in Christ they, beloved, are in God's permissive will. God will permit you not to love, but, beloved, you can be sure. You can be sure you are going against the will of God, and trouble is coming. Trouble is coming for you. You're just like, they're just like Balaam. They're just like Balaam. Beloved, God made it plain what his will was. Plain. But Balaam wanted something else. Wanted something else. That Christian beloved who isn't uh, living is separated from the world. That Christian beloved who won't follow Christ in obedience. That Christian beloved who, who, who won't study the word of God. They are living in God's permissive will. Going their own way. Going their own way. See, they, they know God's will. 
but they aren't doing God's will. And God, beloved, will let them go the way they want. He'll, he'll permit it, beloved, but his anger, listen, will be against them as you are going to see in just a moment. I want you to look what happened. Beloved, when God told Balaam, you can go, since you want to go so bad, you can go. Beloved, he sidled up his donkey and he went with those princes. But look at verse 22. Look at it. Straight from the word of God. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way. Get this. For an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass and his two servants were with him. Folks, God's anger was kindled against Balaam. Against his own prophet, beloved. Kindled against him. Hey, you know we forget that, don't we? we? We talk so much about the love of God, which we should. But, beloved, we forget that God can get angry too. God can get angry. Listen to me. You can miss church. You can miss Sunday school. You can miss Wednesday night. But, but I want you to know God's angry with you. God is angry with you. you you're, you're going your own way. You're not going God's way. You're doing your will, not God's will. You, you can refuse to love. You can refuse to obey. But God, God is angry with you. You can live for the world. You can live for the flesh. But God is angry with you. Because, beloved, you flaunt his will for your own. Just like Balaam did. Just like Balaam. Somebody says, but preacher. Preacher, what if, I got a, if I've got a decision to make? And God's will, God's will isn't spelled out in Scripture about this thing that I want to do. Or I, 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 I'm seeking to do. What do I do then, preacher? You know what you do? See, we got God's word, and there's things that we already know is God's will. You don't need to pray about them. You don't have to pray about being faithful, amen? You don't have to pray about, about praying. You don't have to pray, beloved, about being faithful. You don't have to pray about loving people. You don't have to pray about uh, assembling yourselves together because we know that's God's will, amen? But sometimes we run into things that, beloved, we don't know exactly what God's will is. What do you do? You pray. You pray. You fast. You seek God's will, beloved, as Balaam did. You seek his will, and he will, he will reveal his will to you. That's why I'm telling y'all to pray for this thing that I got. Pray for it. Because I want to do God's will, not my own. I want to do God's will. But once God reveals his will to you, hey, you better do his will. You better do his will. Don't let, beloved, your desires dictate what you do or don't do. Don't let men, beloved, convince you or family or, or Balak or lust or power. You do God's will. You do God's will. So out of the will of God, Balaam started out. And God was angry. God was angry. That's where, beloved, the trouble begins. There Balaam was with his two servants riding his donkey. And, beloved, he was probably dreaming as he rode along about how he was going to spend all that rich, all those riches that he was going to get. I, I, can, I can almost read his mind. Oh man, I'm going to build me a great big house. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I, I, you talk about clothes, I'm going to have the best clothes in the whole land. Hey, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, to get a, 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 can't read my writing. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get me some glasses so I can read. 
No, I'm, I know I'm going to get me a cabin up in the mountains by a trout stream. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm sure going to get me a beautiful horse and get rid of this ratty old donkey. I can, I can, I can imagine what he was thinking. Folks, that man had no idea how close he was to danger. How close he was to death. Because, beloved, there in the road ahead of him was the angel of the Lord. Do you know who the angel of the Lord is? It was Jesus. It was Jesus. This is an appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament. There was the angel of the Lord, beloved. Jesus himself. He, listen, Jesus had become his adversary because he went through that permissive will instead of God's will. Boy, that's, that's terrifying. That's terrifying. But there he was. There he was with his sword drawn. Drone, beloved, to strike, standing in the way. But Balaam couldn't see him. Balaam couldn't see him, but the donkey could. The donkey could. Somebody says, preacher, why is that? Why couldn't Balaam see him and the donkey could? Because God allowed the donkey to see the angel. God allowed him. You see, folks, God was, was angry with him, but get this, God still loved him. He was angry with him, but God still loved him. So the Lord was using the donkey to warn Balaam that he was going the wrong way. He was going the wrong way. Beloved, the donkey saw the angel of the Lord and the Bible says the donkey turned aside into a field. Now, what that donkey was saying was this. He was saying, you're going the wrong way, Balaam. There's danger ahead. You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. Folks, that's not what Balaam wanted to hear. He didn't want to hear that. So, Balaam, beloved, smoked the donkey. He struck that donkey. And that what Balaam was saying to that donkey, I'm going the way I want to go. I'm going the way I want to go. Well, the angel moved to another place. He moved, beloved, to a place where there was a wall on one side and a wall on the other side. I want you to get the picture. Here's the wall. And there's a wall right here. Here's the wall. And there was just maybe enough space for a donkey to get through. And beloved, there he stood. Wall on one side, a wall on the other side with just a little space between the angel and the wall. And here comes the donkey plodding along with Balaam on his back. And beloved, when, when the donkey saw the angel blocking the road. Beloved, the Bible says he thrust himself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot. Beloved, the donkey was trying to say to him, you're going the wrong way, Balaam. Turn back, Balaam. Balaam, you're going to get hurt if you keep going this way. You're going to get hurt. But Balaam went ballistic. And beloved, he took his stick and again he beat that poor, that poor animal again. Then he went, beloved, the way he was going, the way he was going. But this time, this time the angel of the Lord moved to a narrow place in the road where there was no space to get by him, beloved, at all. And, and so, beloved, he waited there with his sword drawn for Balaam to come, waiting there. And folks, when that poor donkey saw that angel this time, he just laid down. He just laid down on the ground, on the road. 
And what he was saying was, Balaam, you've just got to, 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 to uh, go no farther. You've got to stop. You've got to listen to me. You've got to. You're going the wrong way, Balaam. You need to turn back. You're at the point of destruction. Balaam was so mad, so angry, that he beat that poor donkey with a staff. He smote him with a staff. But then the most unusual thing happened. That donkey spoke. He spoke. And he, uh, God, beloved, opened his mouth. And a donkey spoke. You say, I don't believe that. You better. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. If God can make you, beloved, God can cause a donkey to speak. If he can make this universe, he can cause a donkey to speak. If he can hang the sun in the sky, it's nothing for him to cause a donkey to speak. That donkey spoke. The donkey said this. What have I done to be smitten three times? Now, I'm sure, I'm sure that Balak, beloved, if he, maybe if he hadn't have been so angry, maybe he would have been shocked. But I believe, beloved, he was so filled with anger, and I may be wrong about this, but I believe he was so filled with anger that, beloved, it didn't even dawn on him that that donkey was speaking. He heard the words, and he, he, he answered. He was so mad, beloved, he he. he then the donkey said, Am I not thine ass upon which you have written even ever since I was yours? Have I never, have I ever done you wrong? Have I ever done you wrong? And Balaam stopped. And maybe his brain began to work again. Because he had already said, I'm so mad, I'll kill you. If I had a sword, I'd kill you. I'll kill you. But that, that caused Balaam to stop and think. No. No. No, you, 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 you haven't ever done me wrong. I, I don't, and, and I think something clicked in his mind right then. Hey, there's something bigger going on here. And at that moment, the Bible says, beloved, God opened his eyes and, beloved, he saw that angel. He saw the danger. There before him was the angel of the Lord with all of his power, with his sword drawn, ready to strike. And Balaam fell flat on his face before the Lord. Listen, listen to what the angel said to Balaam. Verse 32 and verse 33. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from thee three times, unless she had turned from me. Surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. Oh, listen. The angel said, if it wasn't for that donkey, you'd be dead right now. You'd be dead right now. Folks, what do we learn from this? What do we learn? Let me ask you. If I told this story, how many of you felt sorry for the donkey? Every hand, I did too. I did too. Why? Because the donkey could see the danger. And he was trying so hard to warn Balaam, beloved, uh, what was going on. He was trying to tell Balaam, you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. But Balaam got angry. He got angry. Three times he tried to warn him. And three times he got angry. Now, how many times 
Have you gone to a family member who you know is going the wrong way? Or a friend? And you in love have told them you're going the wrong way. And they got angry with you. Let me ask it this way. How many times has a family member or, 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 or a friend, beloved, come to you and, and, and in love said, listen, you're, you're, missing, you're missing church. You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. Or I, I, I said, I wish, I wish you'd think about that place that you're going. I, it, it's not good for you. It's not good for you. Or, or, or you, they've said, you know, those friends that you're hanging around with, uh, they're gonna, I'm afraid they're going to hurt you. And how many times did you get angry? How many times did you get angry? How many times? How many times did you say or think, you need to mind your own business? Hey, I know what I'm doing. Don't preach to me. How many times? And speaking of preaching, how many times have you gotten angry with the pastor or the preacher because he said something in the pulpit that rubbed you wrong? that stung your conscience, that the Holy Spirit used to burn in your heart. How many times? How many times? So in your mind and in your heart, beloved, you beat the preacher. Hey, go home. We're going to have a preacher for lunch. And the shame is, a lot of times you beat them in front of, of your children or your family. I'll never forget. I'm getting off track here, but it's... Right along with what I'm saying. Johnny Bullman. How many of y'all remember Johnny Bullman? I remember Johnny Bullman telling this story. He had a family in his church, and Johnny Bullman preached hard. But I'm telling you, the man loved. He loved people. And one day, a family got mad with him. And they, 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 I mean, they run him down to, in, in, at their, in their home. They run him down. They were so mad with him. They called him everything in the book. And their children were sitting right there. But it won't long. Johnny Bullman was going down the road one day. And there was a wreck. And he stopped. And there was their son, their teenage son, laying in the road, and he was dying. And Johnny Bullman got down with him and tried to lead that boy to the Lord. He was dying. And that boy looked him in the face and said, my mom and daddy don't like you. And he turned his head. And he died. Lost. He died. Lost. How many times? How many times? Congratulations! You beat the donkey! When that friend came to you, you beat the donkey. When that love family member came to you, you beat the donkey. When you got mad with your preacher or pastor or whoever it was, you beat the donkey. Just like Balaam. Just like Balaam. Just like Balaam. You just beat the donkey. Folks, when we as God's people start going out of the will of God, God, beloved, loves us so much, He will send us a donkey. He will send somebody to try and point us the right way, to try and point us, uh, to teach, tell us to turn around, to go back, that this is dangerous for you, to warn us of the danger. 
You know, sometimes, beloved, we can't see our own mistakes. Sometimes we can't see our own sins. I, there's been times in my life when I couldn't. But thank God, God sent a donkey to warn me. To warn me. Sometimes we're blind to the spiritual or even the physical damage, dan danger that we are walking in. See, others who love us can see sometimes. And God sends them to warn us. To warn us. Instead of, of being angry, beloved, we ought to be grateful. We ought to be grateful. Grateful to God for sending them and grateful to them for loving us the, that much to warn us. Hey, you know, oh, oh, Balaam, oh, Balaam should have kissed that donkey, beloved. And, and we should, beloved, kiss that friend, kiss that family member, even kiss the old ugly preacher. Because to do what they do out of love, I don't get up here and, and yell and spit because I enjoy it. It's because I love. And I know, oh, you harp on this, you harp on that, you harp on that. Yes, I do. And I'm going to keep on because I love you. Amen. See, they're not here to hear it. I'm going to keep on because I love them. Because it's the Word of God. Everything I say in this pulpit is God is my witness. Everything I say is in love. It's in love. And I love them so much I can't stand it. That's why I said at the beginning, it breaks this old heart of mine because I love them so much. I love them so much. And I know, pre preacher, you're preaching to the choir, I know. But the choir is the only one here. So I'm sorry, y'all are getting it. Y'all are getting it. Both of should have kissed the donkey. Beloved, the second thing that we learn is that there is, listen to me, real danger in being out of God's perfect will. So much danger. Folks, the angel of the Lord was going to kill Balaam. Beloved, he was, he was supposed to do God's will. He was the Lord's prophet. And God, beloved, got angry when he didn't. Likewise, if you, beloved, are saved, you belong to God. He bought you with a price. We talked about that this morning. He gave his blood for you and for me. And for all who are saved, you are to do God's will, Christian. Not your own, not your own, not your own. And if you don't, beloved, follow God's will, and you knowingly go against it, God gets angry. He gets angry. Folks, God has revealed much of his will in his word, as I said. Why don't we do it? It's not that hard. Why don't we do it? But too many times what God wants is not what we want and we start, beloved, going our way, the wrong way. And God permits it. But he gets angry. Sometimes we face things that we honestly don't know what God's will is. And that's when, beloved, we fall on our knees and we fast, and we pray, and we seek. We ask him to reveal his will to us about this decision or that decision or, or, or to do this or to do that or not to do this or not to do that. And, but whatever you do, beloved, be sure it's God's will before you do it. Be sure. If you're taking a new job, if you're getting, uh, thinking about getting married, if you are, are buying a car or buying a house, whatever that decision is, seek God's will. It's that important. It's that important. Lay aside your wants. 
Lay aside your desires. Lay aside this thing I'm talking about. I know what I would do if I went by my desire. But I won't know what God wants me to do. I won't know what God's will is. What God's will is. Lay aside your desire, your reason. You know, God's will is not always reasonable. Do you know that? A lot of times we make decisions because we reason this out, you know. Lay aside your reason and seek God's will for what you should do, what He wants you to do, what God wants you to do. And when you find it, and you will, then do God's will. Do God's will. Because if you don't, beloved, if you don't, there is trouble, there is sorrow, there is pain, there is misery awaiting you down that road. And God, beloved, may even take your life physically. And I, I, I'm going to be honest. I believe that some Christians, beloved, have been taken before God would have taken them because they refused to do the will of God. And they went to heaven. Because they were saved. But God took this physical life. Just like he was going to do Balaam that day. Let me tell you, he's God. He will do what is right. Amen? He will do what is right. Balaam. Balaam, beloved, got out of the will of God and God was angry. Somebody says, what happened, preacher? Look at verse 34. Look at verse 34. And Balaam, now he's seen the angel now. He's flat of his face. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it, if it, if it, if it displeased thee, I will get me back again. Folks, what did Balaam do? He fell on his face and repented to God. He said, Lord, I have sinned. I didn't know that you were against me. I will go back again. And just like that, Balaam was forgiven. He was forgiven. Have I ever gotten out of God's will? Yes, I have. Did I pay a price? Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Oh, but my Lord, listen. My Lord was always there with his arms open wide, waiting for me to turn back to him, waiting for me to repent of my sin, waiting to restore me. And friends, he's waiting for you. He's waiting. With love in his heart. He is waiting. I've told this story so many times. I'm ashamed to tell it again, but I'm going to. So hold on. Martha and I hadn't been saved very long. And God blessed us so much. And he opened the door for us to work with the young people in the church. Young people like Joe Webb and Donna and Deborah, Kathy. They were young people then. And oh, we started a youth choir. And we had the best time. We we would practice and our practices were so spirit filled. I mean, we actually had a person get saved one day. At choir practice. And, 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 and God used that. I believe God used that to help all of us grow in the Lord. Only problem was, Martha was the piano player and I led the choir. And we didn't have a piano for Martha to practice on. So one day I was looking at the newspaper. 
and I saw a piano for sale. Y'all know this story, so I've told this of you. And I told Martha, I said, Martha, here's a piano for sale, $200. And it just so happened we had $200 in the bank. And I said, Martha, let's get this piano. It would help so much. Working with those young people, it would help us so much. And she was all excited about it. And so I called the man, and he said, yes, sir. He said, come, come and look at it. He said, if you like it, bring a truck with you, and you can take it right on with you. So Martha and myself and Daddy got in the truck, and we went up to that man's house in Wilson. Just before we got there, most of the funniest thing happened. I thought it was just a thought, but it wasn't a thought. It was the Holy Spirit of God. Suddenly it came into my mind, you haven't prayed and asked God if he wants you to get this piano. And just as quick as that thing came in my mind, I pushed it aside. I said, oh, no, I, I, I thought to myself, I know, I know God wants us to get this piano. Did I say it aloud? I don't remember. I said, I, I know God wants us to get it because we, we're going to use it for his work. You know, we're going to use it for his work. And we walked in there, and that piano was beautiful. We got that piano. And Daddy and I loaded it up on the truck and that man that was there. And Daddy, I had a, a Datsun truck. And we pushed it up against the, 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 the front and against the side. And I told Daddy, I said, Daddy, I said, uh, you go ahead and drive and I'll sit back here and just steady it, keep it steady. And Daddy said, no, no. He said, that, ain't going, that thing ain't going nowhere. It's too heavy. He said, just, just get in the truck and let's go. So I got in there, and we drove home. We got, I want to say, three miles from home. And we had to turn off 42 to, on Webb Lake Road. And I was taking it so slow. I mean, so slow. Wanna? We, we, t we turned that. Listen, if I hadn't have been taking this note, my, da my daddy would have he would have fussed me out. He didn't say a word. We turned that thing, and I think it was the road. I think it was the grade of the road. Because when we turned, that truck kind of went like that. And when it did, that piano went whoom, off the side. Oh, no. It hit the road, and it broke into a million pieces. I mean, completely demolished I stopped that truck. We went back there, Martha, crying like a baby, crying like a baby. And Mary, Daddy and I, all we could do was look at that heap of brokenness. We, we started throwing it into the back of the truck. We threw that mess in the back of the truck. And I went home. And I went to my house and got on my knees and I said, Father, I will never do that again. I will ask your will before I do anything. I used to make salesmen so mad. They'd come and show me their stuff or, or insurance salesman or whatever, and they'd talk and talk and talk. And then they'd say, now, Mr. Edwards, don't you want? I said, no, I've got to pray about it first. Make them so mad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got to pray about it first. But God taught me. And you know, and I honestly believe that if I had asked God, God would have said, yeah, that's, that's okay. That's good. I believe that. But because I did not ask him, and I just went on my way, not knowing if it was God's will or not, God took it away. There's a happy ending to the story, but it's too long. I won't tell it. What I'm trying to tell you, sir, they, they won't know putting this thing back together, brother. If anybody needed stove wood or a campfire wood, it would have been great. They won't know fixing it, but God is good, folks. 
He is so good. We got a choice to go His way, God's will, or our own will. Don't be Balaam. Don't be Balaam. Go. Not in His permissive will, but in His perfect will. And God will bless you. He will bless you. I ask you to stand with me, heads bowed and eyes closed.